This week, I'm really excited to share with you the Log Cabin Tree Skirt Pattern by Dion Stott. This tree skirt is so fun and it's jelly roll friendly. So let me tell you everything you're gonna need to make this. I have used the Pixie Noel 2 jelly roll. It's a really fun, whimsical Christmas line. So you're gonna need that. You're also going to need a quarter yard of accent fabric for the center of your log cabin trees. And then you're going to need two and a half yards of background, a quarter yard for your tree trunks, as well as three and a half yards for your backing and a half a yard for your binding. A couple of helpful tools. If you have an equilateral uh, 60 degree triangle ruler, that comes in really handy, as well as a nice long ruler with a 60 degree mark on it. So I have both of those here that will just make it all go together nicely. So let me show you how we are going to build this out. So I'm going to move some of this out of the way and we'll dive right into it. So to begin, we're going to take our accent fabric for our tree centers and we're going to cut that into a 4 and 3 8 inch strip. If you don't want to mess with the 3 8 you can just do 4 and a half and it will still work out, I promise. It's just going to alter some of your measurements along the way. But I cut mine at 4 and 3 8 and then we're going to use our equilateral triangle and we are going to cut out our centers. And so we're just going to line that up. This doesn't have the 3 8 line, but I can eyeball and see it. It's exactly between the quarter and the half inch mark. And so I am good with that. And so I will make a cut and then turn and move my body out of the way and make another cut. And what's so great about this ruler is then you can just turn and make a cut the other direction. There we go. And so you're gonna need six of these for the centers of your trees. So you'll just keep cutting until you have all six ready to go. And then we are going to begin building our log cabin tree around this center. And so I have my fabric sorted into piles here so I have fabric A, B, C, and D, and E, F, G, and H in this pile. So I'm gonna begin by grabbing fabric A, and that's gonna go on the right side. And I am just gonna kind of center this on here. If you wanna be nice and sure, you can press this in half and just give it a finger press and do the same thing with your center. Because we're using these angles, we have to have a little bit of overhang on the top and the bottom. And so now I'm gonna take this to the machine and we are gonna stitch this down. There we go, now we can press this back. Whoops, got a little rumple in there. Want everything to lay nice. All right. And so now I can keep using my triangle tool and I will just slide this up till I get to the edge of my jelly roll strip and hold that in place. And then I can cut this angle just like so. And then I can slide this up this way. I'm gonna rotate it so it's easier to make that cut make sure we're all lined up and trim there we go so there is the first round so now i'm going to move to my fabric e and do the exact same thing i'm going to find that center point press it find the center point here lay those together so that i have that overlap and stitch it down. There we go. Now we can press this one back. Uh, 
All right, now that we have that all pressed down, we can go ahead and trim this off as well. You'll notice that we're starting to already get to the size of our triangle ruler. So we can just set this aside. It's really just to make it easier to find our centers. And then we can use our big straight ruler to trim this off. Now, my ruler has both a 30 degree and a 60 degree mark. And so what I found is I line up my straight edge with the side I'm wanting to cut and the other side of my tree that I'm building lines up with that 30 degree line. And so that's kind of what I'm watching for. So I'm gonna make this cut. And then we can turn this and do the same thing, except on this side the 30 degree is going to line up with my straight side over here. And now I'm going to cut on this side. And so there we go. We have our little triangle. And so now I'm going to repeat this and do three more rounds around my tree and add the sashing pieces as well. And I'll meet you back here. All right, we made it all the way around. So that is one, two, three, four rounds using our jelly roll. And then we added our sashing strips, which are just two and a half inch white strips as well. And so now the only thing that we have left to do is to add our tree trunk. And so this is a two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle that's going to be the trunk of our tree. And then I have two four and a half by 18 inch background rectangles. So I'm going to go ahead and just sew this in between both of these larger rectangles to start with. So we'll put these right sides together. And sew this side. There we go. Open it up and add this one onto the other side. Make sure it's all nice and straight. My end is fighting with me a little bit. There we go. All right, and now we can press those back. And since I'm already here at the ironing board, I am going to fold this in half and I'm gonna press a line right here in the middle of my tree trunk so that I have a reference point. And I'm gonna grab my big log cabin tree and do the same thing on that little center area. So I know that the red just has to meet up like that and I'll give a little press in there. And so now that I have that done, I can open this up and I'm gonna match up those two press lines right in the middle and we'll put a clip or a pin in there, whatever you have handy. And then I'm going to sew this straight along the bottom edge of our log cabin tree. So let me just line this up and sew it down. we go now we can press this back and our tree trunk will be centered on our log cabin tree that's what we're hoping for you could have a crooked tree if you really wanted but I think it'll look nicer if it's all lined up there we go just a little bit more here all right, and so now we can go ahead and trim off our last little pieces here along the bottom to match up with our angle. So let me get my nice long ruler here so I can make sure this is running straight. Sometimes as we press, it gets a little bit wonky. So I just like to kind of find the center and balance it out. There we go. 
and that can trim off there. And then we need to turn and do the same thing on the other side. Lay this along here. And there we go. All right, so that is our completed log cabin tree block. It's a triangle block, and we're going to make six of these to make our tree skirt. So I have the rest of those ready to go. So I'm gonna begin by sewing them in sets of three. So we'll put two together and add one more, um, and then that will make kind of a half, and then we'll put the two halves together. So let's go ahead and lay two of these together, right sides together, and we're gonna sew all the way down this long side. There's really only one seam to match up and it's down at the bottom where our um, background for our tree trunks is. So I'm going to match that up. And then match up my bottom corners. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and press that just because if we don't press in between it gets to be a little bit big and cumbersome. So I'm just gonna open that up and roll those seams back that we just stitched. So it lays nice and flat, it looks great. Just a little bit more here. All right, and so now we're gonna add one more triangle to this half got this guy right here so same thing we're just going to fold it over and stitch it down Give this a press. Then I have the other half already sewn together. And we can sew our entire top. We are so close to being done. There we go. All right. Here is our nice big half. And I'm actually gonna lay this out over here just so you guys can see what I'm talking about because I kind of want to match up the center here. So I'm gonna open up my other half, which I have completed and sewn together. And I'm actually gonna line this up because you'll see where the jelly roll strip comes through here and it comes out here. Those two seams actually want to kind of nest I want those to intersect. So it's gonna kind of make this swirl in the middle. And so I'm gonna grab my clip and put that right there. I found I didn't need very many clips or pins for this, but if I, as long as I have my center lined up and that looks like it's matching perfect. And so we're gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna sew all the way down this long straight side. Right, and away we go. I'm 
approaching that middle, so I'm just going to kind of hold my finger there to keep it together. Move the clip out of my way. Keep it all lined up. So now our entire top is done. This would be an amazing table topper for a round table or a giant square table, but we are going to quilt this and we're gonna come back and turn it into a tree skirt. All right, doesn't that look great? It is all quilted. I did an edge to edge pattern that we have here in Missouri Star. It's called Mitten Meander, and it's just perfect for this wintry Christmas project that we're working on. And so now we are ready to turn this into a tree skirt. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. We are gonna cut through our quilt, which is the scariest part. But first off, um, I am gonna mark my center. So let me move this out of the way and pull this over here. I had a pin, there it is. And so in the pattern, she recommends about a four and a half inch circle for the center of your tree skirt. Um, I am like Jenny, I just find the closest circular thing. And so I'm gonna use my <laughs> thimble cup right here. And I'm gonna plop that right down in the middle of my project. Eyeball that, make sure it looks good. I think that looks pretty nice. It looks close enough to me. And now I am going to mark all the way around the outside of this because I'm gonna cut on this marked line, which I know is so scary now that we've uh, quilted this beautiful quilt top. So I'm just gonna run my pin right along that edge. There you go. There it is, we have a circle in the middle. Let me put all my, my doohickeys back in their container, <laughs> put them back on the shelf. And now we are going to make our cuts to our center circle. And so you can cut this with a scissor if you like. I'm gonna use a rotary cutter and my ruler just to keep it as straight as possible. And we are just gonna follow along right next to this seam edge. So I'm just gonna come about a quarter inch from the seam and use my ruler and I'm gonna cut all the way to that circle. So I actually need to slide this up so I'm on the mat. There we go, the moment of truth. And we are gonna make a cut. There we go, look at that, ah! So nerve wracking. All right, and then we're gonna finish this off. Make sure it lines up with where I stopped. Then I'm gonna stop at that circle and grab my scissors to finish this off. So let's just pull this over and I'm gonna cut right on that circle that I drew. You guys have no idea how scary this is to do on camera. There's no do-overs once you cut into this thing, you know? But that's all right. Finished is better than perfect, right? This is the real deal. Okay, there is our middle circle. So the scariest part of our tree skirt is done, and so now it just comes down to the binding. I have three different bindings prepared here, so let me explain those to you. To begin, I have just some white regular binding. I did make it a little bit narrower. According to the pattern instructions, it's cut at two and a quarter instead of two and a half. And so you'll bind this straight edge of either side first, and then you'll come back with some bias binding. So we can do this inside circle 
but you're gonna wanna leave some tails at the start and the finish because that's how you're gonna tie. And so you'll use your bias binding of the white to do this circle so it'll make that curve nicely and lay flat. And then I decided I wanted a pop of color for the outside edge, so I use this cute little kind of snowfall dot. And this is just a regular binding. But again, we're gonna leave a tail here at the end. Remember this will have the straight white binding, so it'll still be a finished edge. And we'll just leave an end that we can top stitch or whip stitch close. So we have a tie here at the center and here at the end. And we will just bind all the way around the edge. Isn't that so fun? I just love this project. I think it's so clever and cute. And she even has instructions for a little bonus ornament in her pattern, so be sure to pick that up. And I think this would make a really cute little garland to hang on a Christmas tree as well. And then it would match your beautiful tree skirt that you've worked so hard on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this log cabin tree skirt. Thank you so much to Dion for letting me share it with you. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. I'll see you soon. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.